Toyota's chief technology officer Hiroki Nakajima just admitted to the public media that their Toyota Mirai was not a successful product. What was at one point the only hydrogen-powered electric vehicle available on the market didn't turn out to be as good of a product or a bestseller as the company had initially hoped to. The company isn't stopping production of the Mirai anytime soon as it is still an extremely innovative testbed to develop new technologies and applications off of, but clearly lackluster sales for this product as well as infrastructure have plagued a what was once considered one of the best opportunities in the EV space. So, based on all this information, is hydrogen transportation a thing of the past? And are we actually going to see new models of hydrogen cars coming onto the market anytime soon? Well, folks, those questions are exactly what we're going to try to address in this video. But as usual, folks, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. First things first, folks, let's put things into context. At the recent Japanese auto show, the CEO and the CTO of Toyota unveiled some new products from the company, not only for electric vehicles, but also concept vehicles for their future gas-powered products. When Nakajima sat down for an interview with the press media outlet, he mentioned that although the company is very proud of what they've done with the Mirai, it is not a very successful product, not because of its design or its engineering, but rather because of lagging market forces. Point is that the Toyota Mirai is only sold in specific parts of California, and throughout California, there are only 55 up and running hydrogen refueling stations, which means there's basically no opportunity for Toyota to sell this kind of product outside of that state. California has the most rewarding clean energy incentives and policies from any country or state on planet Earth, which is exactly why the Mirai sold 2,000 plus units annually since its launch in 2021. It's the age-old chicken and egg problem that although you can't solve with hydrogen, you can with electric vehicles, which is exactly why the likes of Tesla and so many other automakers faced much more success with electric vehicles in California than with hydrogen. EVs can be charged at home or at supercharging stations that are laid out in many stalls across the state. Whereas with a hydrogen vehicle, you really need existing gasoline and diesel dispensing equipment to be leveraged to refuel this kind of vehicle. On paper, hydrogen offers a lot of benefits, and in the ideal world, if hydrogen stations were abundant and the economics made sense, which although right now don't, are on trend to make sense with the right investment and policies, hydrogen vehicles could seriously outsell gasoline and diesel because they essentially combine the benefits of having an electric powertrain with the practicality of using a fuel and refueling in less than five minutes. Even if hydrogen is produced through natural gas or polluting resources, it is still cleaner than its electric vehicle and gasoline counterparts, not only because of the lack of any major rare earth metals in the process of making hydrogen, but also because you can get a lot more range for a similar amount of energy content when using a hydrogen fuel cell. But obviously in the real world, numbers talk a lot more than theories and fantasies about what could happen. And the simple reason why the Hyundai Nexo failed, the Honda Clarity failed, and now Toyota Mirai is because infrastructure was lacking and competition from a similarly available and feasible product in the form of battery electric was much higher. However, this does not mean that hydrogen technology is not applicable in the transportation sector for all different kinds of applications. There still 
a really important niche of the hydrogen market when it comes to heavy duty trucking, pickup trucks, long haul transport, aircraft, as well as shipping that needs to be addressed. And although the Toyota Mirai in its automotive business was not the most successful line strategy for the company, it is certainly a good test for technology that can be applied to other areas. Instead, hydrogen can also be used for long duration energy storage of renewable energy. As I'm sure we're all familiar, solar and wind are very different from baseload power generation, which means they produce power at their own will and can't really be controlled by demand. That requires energy storage, and because hydrogen is such a versatile medium and can be stored for days, months, and weeks, it is really the perfect source of storing this energy and also helping decarbonize those areas where batteries simply can't be used. And although cars could have been one of those areas, clearly advancements in lithium-ion technology made it so that they aren't. Batteries are doing a great job in powering automotive applications, but based on the restrictions of physics and science, they really can't be scaled up to the requirements of a much larger scale application, whether that be long haul trucking from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, or the powering of aviation through a Boeing 787. In those scenarios, you really do need a liquid or a gaseous form of fuel. And hydrogen is essentially the version of gasoline in the renewable world. With a similar versatility to diesel or gasoline, you can make renewable biofuels and synthetic fuels from hydrogen while capturing carbon from the environment. You can make gasoline essentially from renewable energy, which is certainly going to be a game changer for these aforementioned applications. And as I'm sure you're already able to figure out, a lot of these developments and benefits can't really be realized on a retail level for consumer and applications. A lot of these benefits that hydrogen provides are really only realized by industries and corporations who have to hit certain ESG and decarbonization targets, as well as making sure they can decarbonize their transport and logistics fleets. And because you can produce hydrogen far, far away from where it is actually used, unlike with electricity, you can really make it an extremely versatile power source for a lot of these applications. When it comes to refueling infrastructure, the only way that's going to improve is once these applications themselves are targeted and investment at a large scale reaches, which is exactly why although Toyota's technology with the Mirai does make sense on paper, it isn't executing nearly as well right now, because clearly, although the technology is right, the time is not. What do you guys think? Was the Toyota Mirai a true failure? And are we going to see more hydrogen applications on the road soon? As usual, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, folks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.